1 Corinthians chapter 10. So 10 packs a punch. There's a lot being said here in, in uh, chapter 10. For me, the takeaway is verse 4, verse 13, 14, and 20. And it's a long, it's got 33 verses, so let's go through this. But it's really powerful stuff. And again, it's kind of his ending the whole thing about food. What be it drink or meat. So, but this, I think, when it, when it comes to Paul's teaching on what we put in our body, the, the drink and the meat, this is um, very powerful. All right, chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did, here's, here's a takeaway for me. Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things that are examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters. Then if you spend any time in the Bible, idolatry is terrible. And almost every single person on the planet really doesn't know what it is. And they're all partakers. Uh, the idolatry in today's world is, is just, it's everywhere. You can't, you can't escape it. Neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them, committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. Did you catch that? In one day, 23,000 dead. Verse nine, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and they were destroyed by the serpents. Remember when they let all the venomous snakes loose? Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Now, here we go. My takeaway on ch chapter 10 here is in verse 13 and 14. Let's read it. There has... No temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Do you see that? We're going to have temptation, but God gives us a way out. That's what that's saying right there. You're going to be able to escape that temptation. You're going to be able to get around it. So don't fall. You know, don't let it be right there in front of you and fall for it. Look around. Turn your head to the right and left. You know, turn turn your turn your back towards that temptation and escape it. God's giving you a way out. 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. It's, it's going to be sad how many people are in the fire because they cannot free themselves of idolatry. I have done many videos on idolatry. Go look for that. It was probably done a year ago. It's probably been a year since I've done one on, on idolatry, but you really need to understand what all that entails. It's the very last thing that John says in his letters. After Patmos, after he writes Revelation, one of the very last things he ends his letters with, little children, Stay away from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread. One body. We are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything... Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. Verse 20, a good takeaway here. 
But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not stand that ye should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man's another wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscious sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not. Okay, that's the takeaway. If you know it's been offered to idols, don't eat it. For the, his sake that showed it. And for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or do drink, whatsoever you do, you do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. And all God's people said, stay in the word.